All right. Let's check out some of the Delirium uh, POE trailer slash new league. Uh, this comes out on March 13th. It comes out the same day as Neo 2. And also Diablo 3's new league launches the same day. <sighs> and a week before Doom and Animal Crossing. What will you find in the darkest reaches of your mind? Come, step into my world of twisted illusion. Witness the bird. All right, how many uh, how many people do you think are gonna crash with this with this fog? How many people do you think? Oh fear. Gonna be such a crazy thing. A little madness may expand your mind. Your dream will be your down. So are normal bosses also tweaked if they're in the delirium? Talk to me, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Touch the mirror of delirium and your nightmares will manifest as reality. I don't want to, Chris. Existing enemies gain terrifying abilities and new foes emerge from the mists. Plunge deeper into the delirium to seek deadlier terrors and even greater rewards. So, hold on. I'm sure. Never mind. This will get answered Delirium later. I'll, I'll wait for the videos to me. To greatly increase its risk and return. Consume orbs of delirium to put entire maps into a state of delirium. Each orb increases ah, the intensity and adds a new reward type. Combine splinters from these maps to reveal delirium's mysterious endgame encounter. Grow your passive skill tree by placing cluster jewels in its outermost sockets. Craft these jewels to improve their passives. Add one of 280 new notables, or graft additional sockets and exclusive keystone passives. Hold on. What was that? Gain two grasping vines each second while stationary. 2% chance to deal double damage per grasping vine. 1% less damage taken per grasping vine. Up to 10 vines can grasp you. So for five seconds, you get 10% double damage and 10% less damage taken. Huh. Or 20%, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Math is tough, don't Experience do math. Experience delirium on Friday the 13th of March. So, Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, well, let's watch Ziggy's. Well, let's, let's go scroll down first on this thing and we'll kind of go through this in real time. Uh, secondly, I think I'm not a hundred percent sure yet, but I think, I think I have a hard time saying this. I think I'm going to play Solo Self Found in this next league. 
I think I might play SSF. For the reason being, uh, IAZ, thanks for those 10 gifted subs. For the reason being that I don't think I'm going to play the league at the start of the league. Because there's so many games. Like, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Like, we might have to do Neo 2 in the day and then, like, do night streams of Path of Exile or something. I don't know. It's going to... I have to think about how I want to do it. It starts to come into play uh, that there's only so much time in the day to where I can also, uh, like, have a life outside of streaming. <laughs> so... And, and all here's the reason being all the preview content for Ori and the will of the wisp is saying that that game is like two to three times longer than the first game. And the first game is about eight to 10 hours. So if that's a 30 hour game. And then Neo two comes out and Neo two is fucking Neo two. That's a 40 plus hour game. And then a week after that is doom eternal which is supposed to be a longer game. Uh. So maybe SSF. The only thing that's going to be kind of shitty about SSF is that I would either have to play a build that requires no items that define it or I would have to just play the game with like totems. And if I get a good drop for another build, I play that build. <clears throat> and I don't know if I want to play totems. So. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Uh, let's read through this here. Uh, a mysterious affliction has infiltrated your mind as you touch the mirror of delirium. Yeah, 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 we already know all that stuff. Defeat the nightmare. As the mist of delirium continues, new enemies emerge and the existing foes gain savage talents. Delirium introduces dozen, dozens of lethal monster modifiers, many new bosses, and horrifying demons lurking within the rare or within rare and unique monsters. Hold on, let's see what these are. Oh, okay. Uh... Okay. That doesn't look that too terrifying. Looks normal. Plunge into the horrors. You travel deeper in the delirium. You'll experience more numerous and challenging enemies with greater rewards. We let greed and hubris draw you into the madness. The fuck is that? Is that a graphic glitch? Like, what is going on there? These cutscenes don't actually tell me what the fuck is happening. <laughs> or these uh, screenshots, I mean. Terror uh, permeates ray class. Nowhere is safe. Encounters you once mastered can now be played on the effects of delirium, substantially ramping up their difficulty and rewards. If you're daring, you can exploit delirium to amplify past conflicts. So that's delirium within the Alva Temple. That's delirium within the Syndicate. That's delirium within Legion. So you can like double up on all that stuff. Interesting. Orbs of Delirium. These are things that you add to the maps. We knew about that. Thanks to the video. Wonder how rare these will be. Uh, yes, I am, Corzin. And then that looks like it's the boss of the Simulacrum. And then these are the... Yeah. This is the big thing. 
280 new notables. Minions have 12%. Jeez. I feel like this shit's going to be absurd. I feel like it's just going to be insane. So this is one passive skill. It gives you 20% increased damage, 20% increased damage with elements from attack skills. Ailments, I should say. The enemies killed by your attacks have 50% chance to explode, dealing a tenth of their maximum life as physical damage. You also get 0.8 of attack damage leech this life, 20% increased maximum total recovery per second from life leech, and 20% increased total recovery per second from life leech. And that's just on a random rare. Like, I really wonder how rare that stuff is. Sixty percent more attack speed while you are unencumbered. Ten to twelve or fourteen to twenty per ten decks while you are unencumbered. You are unencumbered while you have no equipped gloves, main hand, or offhand item. Wait, so is that one of those three or all of those three? That kind of reads them. Uh, a little bit ambiguous. It's all of them? Okay. I mean, if you're stacking decks, you can probably get pretty crazy with that. <clears throat> That's three socket passive skills. That's one small passive skill, which grants nothing. Wait, what? This just gives you three jewel sockets, is that? Oh, it gives you this. I see. So that this is probably like what you're gonna need to like start a big thing like this. Unless there's something else. I wonder what the frequency of these drops will be. Cause like if you do play SSF, these things will probably be super cheap in uh, in Trade League after a while. Potentially if they're not super rare. I wonder if that'll just always drop from the uh, the boss. From the, uh, the League boss. I don't know. I guess we'll see. In-game improvements. Conquerors the Atlas uh, revitalizes Path of Exile's in-game experience in Delirium. We have made Conqueror spawning deterministic. Reintroduced sextant vendor types or vendor recipes. Created extra incentives to reach higher awakening levels. Revamped Vol side areas and maps and improved the Temple of Atzwaddle. And more. What is reintroduced sextant vendor recipes? Does that mean selling three for the higher tier? Is that what three to one? Yeah. Have they said or talked about what is revamped in the side areas? The the vol side areas. Oh, Ziggy does. Okay, we'll watch Ziggy's video here after this. How does this work? Is this saying what tier each of the like what is does Ziggy go into what this means? Okay, we'll just watch the Ziggy video here in a sec. Uh, Delirium introduces four new skill gems and three new support gems. In classic Path of Exile style, we've focused on versa versatile designs that can complement many styles of gameplay. Blade Blast. Detonate blades that are now left behind by Ethereal Knives, Blade Vortex, and Blade Fall for a potent combo. Okay. I don't like any of those abilities, so might not play that. Fires a projectile from your wand that bounces back and forth, forking with each bounce. Spell damage further empowers the wand attack. I don't like wanders, or I've never played a wander, I should say, so not sure about that. Stormbind. 
Place storm runes on the ground that can spread out as you channel. Let's you channel mana into your runes, upgrading and detonating them. That seems pretty like passive and slow. Wonder if that's like a boss killer move. Huh. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound brain dead enough. In addition to the new currency items, cluster jewels, uh, gems, and in-game simulacra maps, Path of the Delirium introduces many new div cards and unique items that provide new character build opportunities. Perfidi, perfidy, perfidy, maybe. <clears throat> Twenty-five percent increased melee damage, seventy-four max life. You can have two different banners at the same time. Banners you're carrying gain one stage on melee hit, up to five per second. War banner has increased adrenaline duration, and dread banner has increased fortify duration. So basically, this is the hey, I'm actually going to use these banners ability. Uh, seventy percent max es 18 to cold and lightning 25 percent chance to sap enemies in chilling areas enemies in your chilling areas take 32 percent increased lightning damage 15 percent increased effect of non-damaging ailments what does sap enemies mean Oh, they do less damage? Gotcha. Huh. Thank you, honey. Okay. That's fine. Can I have some water? Uh, you can just grab me one. Thank you. Um, I wonder if that'd be good. Is this good for cold dive vortex? No, because not really. Actually, it's terrible. Like, increased lightning damage. What do you use this with? These gloves are nuts. What would you use this with? Could you use this with arc, where your arc does freezing? I guess. Huh. I don't know. Uh, Katava's teaching small cluster jewel adds discipline of Katava. Every second, consume a nearby corpse to recover 5% of life and mana. 10% more damage taken if you haven't consumed a corpse recently. Okay. All right. That seems kind of nuts. But in other situations, that seems kind of fucking awful. Huh. It's interesting. Yeah, that might be one where you have to take out for your boss or something. Thank you, dear. Just like it is 20% increased effect per allocated passive skill between it and your class's starting location wait what this jewel socket has 20 percent increased effect per allocated passive skill between it and your class's starting location So does this mean that every passive skill between where this jewel slot is and your class's starting location gives you plus five decks and plus five mana? Oh, just plus one. Gotcha. Huh. We'll watch Ziggy's video. Uh, hey, if these are really common, I'm super into this. Because I hate delving. However, if these are super common, rip all of the people that enjoy delving because your market's about to crash. I guess we'll see what that actually does. I don't know. Uh... Oh, shit. 
Wait, two of two for dying sun? Have they said where this drops from? They never tell us? Huh. Yeah, what if that drops from... Um, what is that moon... What is the unique moon temple map called? Is that Twilight Temple? I wonder if this drops from Twilight Temple. Or it would have to drop from whatever boss has Lunaris in it, which is Moon Temple. Is that right? Which is... Not that bad of a map. I guess we'll see. Delirium Supporter Pack. Uh, eh, those look... What is this? Hold on, let's watch the video. Oh, here, we can just look at it right here. <clears throat> it looks all right. I like the weapon effect. Ooh, that port, that portal looks really cool. And that weapon effect looks actually not bad. That's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, I saw you can have random portals as well. All right, let's watch the Ziggy D video. And while we're watching, I'm going to eat a little bit of food here. Uh, where I need my good day, mate. Where are you at? Good day, Ziggy D. Okay, here dude. Calm down now. Uh, here it is. Good day, Ziggy. Does he say that literally every video? Hold on. Let's go. He didn't say it there. He said, let's go. Good day, folks. Ziggy D here. Okay. Today, All right. Today, we're going to build. He said today. So. So. It's been a. Uh, it's been a good day, Ziggy D here. Good day. Good day, Ziggy. Good day. All right. All right. Good day, Ziggy D. Good day. Good day, guys. Good day, guys. Good day, Ziggy D. Okay. And then we're gonna throw. Okay. This was a viewer. Okay. Good day, folks. Ziggy. Good day. To be forgotten. A fate. That's three points. Okay. Anyways, we get the fucking memo. Okay. We understand who we're watching. Good day, Ziggy D. Jesus. Fucking Ziggy D. Goddamn. All right. Here we go. Here and welcome to my reveal of the next Ten part of video. Excel expansion, Delirium. Come, step into my world of twisted illusion. Witness the birth of the ass. Through the mirror of delirium, we see a reflection of our own world shrouded in insanity. For those with the fortitude to cross through the looking glass, great challenge and rewards await. In delirium, players will cross the threshold and enter the delirium state. Through this new perspective, we see a ray class shrouded in fog. Within this fog dwells both new horrors and twisted versions of old ones. The further we travel from the mirror of delirium, the thicker the fog becomes and the more dangerous its trials. The Fog of Delirium can even alter bosses well known to us, changing their forms and powers. New powerful bosses can also lurk deep within the Fog to challenge players in this new mental state. Each Delirium encounter modifies existing monsters and bosses and adds new monsters to each zone. As we explore deeper into the Fog and defeat more of the monsters within, the greater our reward becomes. In addition to the regular loot from our encounters, Delirium will also track the amount of destruction you have wrought while in the Delirium state and deliver increasing rewards. The type of reward will be visible from the outset, so for a reward of currency, uniques or other desirable bounties, you can risk pushing the limits for multiple rewards. The more you kill, the greater the bounty, and it'll be possible to earn multiple of the special- Wait, so... Does that mean that while leveling, 
you can just always go through the portal and the entire map will be deliriumized. It's not bad. Specified drops from a single delirium if you push deep enough into the fog. Delirium can affect every encounter in the game, including story bosses and endgame maps. In most cases, the Mirror of Delirium will be near the beginning of the map, so that we can progress the Delirium state as we progress through the map. If things have gotten too out of hand, players can retreat and let the fog dissipate to return to normality. Speaking with Chris Wilson, Managing Director of Grinding Gear Games, Delirium was inspired by a crowd favourite Breach, but it aims to greatly improve the concept by giving greater control over increasing risk versus reward and better integration with the base game and previous League mechanics. Delirium will modify and interact with existing League mechanics such as Breach, Incursion and Betrayal, making them far more dangerous and rewarding. In addition to the regular Mirror of Delirium encounters, players will also be able to create Delirium maps using Orbs of Delirium. These maps will contain a uniform amount of the Delirium fog throughout the entire map. Adding more Orbs of Delirium will create thicker fog and a map that is much more difficult than normal, while increasing the Delirium rewards. Each orb has a specific reward type that players will be able to stack up and earn upon successfully killing enough monsters within the map. Additionally, Delirium maps can drop splinters which can be combined to create a simulacrum. The challenge the simulacrum will contain and the story and creature behind the Delirium is being kept a secret for now. Back to the topic of rewards, Delirium is a league designed to push boundaries, including the boundaries of the passive skill tree. In what is reported to be the biggest change to the skill tree since Ascendancies, Delirium will add cluster jewels which can be socketed to expand the passive skill tree. These jewels dynamically expand the skill tree, adding new clusters, notables and keystones for players to further customise and create new builds with. Most of these jewels drop with specific unchangeable enchantments and are craftable. The crafted modifiers alongside of the enchantment will determine what the passives and notables will offer. Here we have a small cluster jewel with a notable cluster of 3 points. The crafted modifier on this jewel adds a notable, Molten One's Mark, and this can be changed through crafting. This next medium cluster jewel adds 5 new passives and has crafted modifiers adding life and chaos resistance to the minor nodes, and a blessed rebirth notable. Note that it also has a modifier granting an extra socket which you can expand with another cluster jewel of a smaller size. And here we see a large cluster jewel with a socket and two notables. It's possible by using large, medium and small cluster jewels to chain three jewels deep into this new skill tree expansion. And this can be done from any socket. What the fuck? That seems insane. in the outer areas of the skill tree. With the fact that these are craftable, these new cluster jewels will offer insane new levels of customization and build creation. Chris Wilson explained that the idea here was to allow players to create and customize builds that were much more experimental in nature. While these will be much easier to trade with other players than the highly obscure Legion jewels, it still presents a build creation experience that'll be much more unique player to player than copying build plans from the preset and static skill tree. In addition to the craftable jewels, there will also be unique jewels that add new keystones, such as Hollow Palm Technique. This keystone allows for a new monk style build right. that uses neither weapons nor glove slots. Another unique jewel here allows a large cluster with three jewel sockets, so that you can chain up to three more medium cluster jewels from it if you want to go really crazy with expanding the passive tree. Finally, for the min maxes, there will also be a new corrupted jewel that can be placed anywhere called Split Personality. This unique jewel will have different bonuses that scale with the distance from the player's class starting point. You can even use this with the new cluster jewels to further extend the distance that it's placed. Alongside of Legion jewels, these highly customizable cluster jewels from Delirium aim to give players the opportunity to create truly unique build ideas. Now in addition to all of these jewels, there will be other new uniques available in Delirium. Four of these will be part of a cosmetic armor set based upon the storied antagonist. Perfidy, for example, is a unique body armor that allows you to carry two banners with enhancements for their use. 
Alga Mortis, on the other hand, is a pair of gloves that provides an independent method of applying the Lightning Ailment Sap, which lowers enemies' damage by 20%. As you can see, this set of items is not necessarily designed to be used together, but they can be skin transferred as a complete cosmetic set for those wishing to play Delirious Dress-Ups. Now alongside Delirium League, the core game is also receiving some major improvements. The new Conquerors of the Atlas Endgame is getting a much needed update to make Conqueror spawns deterministic rather than random. Each map you complete will check a box on the left of the Atlas screen, which now shows exactly how many maps you have to complete in that region to spawn your next Conqueror fight. There will also be a new 3 to 1 vendor recipe to trade up sextants. Additionally, last expansion Vile side areas were added to endgame maps, but their challenge and rewards were vastly out of sync with the rest of the game. Vile side areas and maps will now always spawn as rare with lots of modifiers, and bosses have also been buffed. Additional rewards have also been added to the encounters. Good. The Temple of Atsuadal is also receiving some much needed love, making it more dense and rewarding, with a suite of improvements to specific room rewards. Now last expansion's Metamorph League was a hit, and as such has been added to the core game as content you'll encounter randomly, alongside of some deterministic ways of encountering Metamorphs with enhanced rewards. Good. And of course, what is a new expansion without new skills to play? Most recent expansions have gone with a themed what approach, skill is restricting that? new skill designs to specific archetypes. However, Delirium is a bit different. Oh, is that GGG the, the allowed the skill thing? designers an unfettered opportunity to design whatever skills they wanted to see in the game and they created four new skills and three new support gems. An example of what happens when you give the designers free reign is a Blade Blast. All Blade skills, Blade Vortex, Blade Fall and Ethereal Knives, huh. now leave behind Blades. This is important because Blade Blast is a skill which can allow you to detonate your Blades. You can cast Blade Fall and then detonate the Blades stuck in the ground, or you can cast both a Blade skill and Blade Blast in sequence with cast on crit or other similar mechanics. You can now also cast Animate Weapon on your blades, forever solving the debacle of how Animate Weapon works in encounters that don't have weapon drops. Huh. One of the skill designers wanted to make something really pretty it seems, because the other skill I can reveal today is Kinetic Bolt, a mesmerizing new wand attack. This new skill creates forking bolts with solid interaction with the barrage support. Now I'll close things good. off with a couple of my own opinions. Delirium looks to be a much more modern take on the concept of Breach. It's still the idea of a radiating outward circle, oh, but good. it sounds like we'll have a lot more direct control over the challenge it presents as we push it further and further along through each map. That it actually interacts with regular monsters, bosses, and other league mechanics should make for some pretty spicy challenges, and it also should present some interesting risk-reward moments that we'll have to evaluate on the fly. Being able to see the reward that we'll get if we push into the fog harder should provide some solid motivation if we know that the reward is going to be good, and that if we take the risk we can potentially earn multiple instances of that reward. I'm personally most excited, however, for the new jewels and build customization they'll offer. I started last league falling in love with the Legion jewels, I know I'm a little bit late to the party here, and I've been using them in almost all of my builds. But the Legion jewels do have some rather big problems with the obscurity of the seed based system that they use. Being able to specifically craft jewels to create passive clusters is likely going to lengthen both the tail end of the crafting system in the league and also build creating opportunities. It'll be exciting to find out just how many options are available for each cluster type. There's apparently 280 new notables available. It'll also be very interesting to see just how much this will change the nature of build creation in Path of Exile. In some more good news, in my press interview that I had with Chris Wilson, he was happy to report that thanks to improved management of their Christmas break period and their expanding team, GGG was ahead of schedule on the development of this league, which is always good to hear and promises a solid league with a clean launch. The Delirium expansion is coming to PC on March 13th, no, I don't. releasing a week later. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D. I, I don't know if you should have said that, but, you know, I let the league speak for itself, Mr. Chris Wilson, because if it fucks up, we're just going to go back to what you just said. And, you know, you know, you know. Also, if you haven't seen uh, Ziggy's content, check him out on uh, the YouTubes at <coughs> Ziggy D Gaming, I believe. Can't be worse than Wilson. <coughs> True enough. Um, yeah, I still think I might play SSF, uh, but we'll see. 
I mean, that's 13 days away, so we got some time. 